And you can see that I do have a building already modeled. I took this from the Sketchup Warehouse. It's very useful to go to the video editor icon, which is the one right here, and just show grid lines. So I'm just gonna click create a view in just one second and then we can change that later on. And the first thing that I always like to do is I'm gonna use two point perspective. So Enscape at default has three point perspective. And that basically means that as you can see some of the angles, I mean some of the lines that are, uh, that are on the side of the composition are not gonna be 90 degrees straight. So this one is a little bit distorted. In architectural images, it's actually a lot more common to take pictures with two point perspective. And that's because no matter how close or what kind of angle we get, we're always going to get 90 degree angle for all vertical lines. Now, if you would want, for example, to take an aerial image, the most useful thing would be with a three point perspective. And that is because as you can see right now, we do have two point perspective activated but the building is very distorted and the whole composition is kind of messed up. So if you go back to three point perspective, you can see that this looks more natural. So remember for aerial shots, just use three point perspective, which is the default one. And then I usually for the ones that are eye level or anything similar to that, just use that two point perspective. Anyway, now we have to go back to our composition and I'm going to try and fix it. Now let's lower the field of view as well. I believe that field of view is from 60 to 70 degrees works fine. I'm going to leave it something like this. I'm going to go and edit the existing view that we have here. So I'm going to go over here, lower the camera down just a little bit, and then we can just click save. And now the view will be set up to the new angle that we did here. I believe that the sun intensity is way too much over here. So I'm just going to lower it. And as you can see, the image is immediately more balanced. Now, the reason being is that the contrast will be too high if the sun brightness is too high. So you can see something like this is just not realistic. If we click this icon, you will see that there's a whole library of materials with almost 400 materials. Let's just try this one. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to click import selection and I can just apply it right over here. For example, right now we do have uh, kind of a similar material as this one over here, but we can obviously make it a bit larger. Now I can choose this and I can make it larger either through the SketchUp tab, which is right here. So right now it's 100 centimeters by 100. So if I do 150 by 150, you can see that it changes the size on Enscape as well. So let's go on and now apply the rest of the materials. Also, I need to apply a foreground material and that would be useful here in the Enscape materials library as well. So I'm going to go to grounds and usually for grass, I believe that the best one in Enscape is grass 03. I'm going to import the selection and then I will apply it all over. Uh, let's take a look and see. This over here is a concrete material. Once again, we can find that pretty easily. We can just go here at the Enscape material library, go to concrete and then this is similar to the one that is on the example. So I'm going to go ahead, select the surface and just apply the concrete material. Let's go to stones and let me just choose one that is similar to this. I think this one would work better. So stone O2 wall, I will just import it and then I will select these surfaces. I will double click on them, apply it over here, apply it on this one too. Now what we have left in terms of just applying the materials is these columns. Let me try and apply this same material on these columns here. So something like this, as you can see, with just two clicks here in the SketchUp window, I was able to tweak the material and make it a bit lighter and not super saturated. Now I'm gonna go ahead and choose a dark gray color and I will apply on this mesh. So I'm gonna choose the wood material over here and I'm gonna apply it on the door. Um, I need to apply this onto these little parts as well. If I just go over here, if you can see this kind of tree icon, which is called the asset library in Enscape, I can just go ahead onto the vegetation category, select it, and then we're just going to scroll down. So, so I'm gonna scroll down. As you can see, there's quite a few of trees. Now there's two different ways that we can actually place the asset library components or objects. In Enscape, we can just select them, as you can see from the window of from SketchUp, and I can just select it and just place, for example, a tree over here. This is one of the options that we have. Or the other thing that we can do is if I go in the Enscape window and if I go to the asset library in Enscape, and I just move a little bit upwards. Now over here, you can see that we do have the asset library in Enscape, just like we would have it in the sketch window. And then we also have the categories, the tags and all that, just like we did and we saw there. But what we do not have in the sketch window is this multi-asset placement. So if I choose this, and then if I go to the categories and I go to vegetation, I can just scroll down and I can just choose a few trees that I do want to import here. For example, this one, uh, let's just try a bigger variety of trees. And then we can also choose, for example, some kind of bushes need for uh, the 
let me go up the station uh, for the whole landscape of the surroundings so let me just choose a few kind of more wild bushes I'm just gonna choose a whole variety of them they might not even match in terms of landscape but and now for example I've just chosen some random ones I'm not even sure what I've chosen we can just select one so let me just select this we can turn on the density and as you can see now we do have the whole vegetation applied it so now we could just can click confirm placement we can apply changes as you can see now we will have the vegetation in there with just one click now we can do the same thing for that one so if i just click and wait a few seconds as you can see it populated the whole scene over there we're going to confirm the placement apply the changes and we can do it for this part as well now as you can see the computer can kind of get a bit heavy on this stuff so make sure that it can handle it before you use it because in minecraft uh, if i go back to the composition you can see that the whole scene is now populated and it does look way better okay now we can just move on to uh, the rest of the landscape maybe some rocks or anything like that can make it look even better as you can see the materials do not look the best right now but we can fix them later on so let me just see maybe we can just use a whole other concrete material i do not like these divisions maybe i think the concrete o3 would look much better concrete material looks much better than it previously did let's go on and i want to show you a little bit of the landscape material editor so if you go here in the landscape material editor which is this icon over here uh, which is a sphere with black and white uh, kind of boxes or surfaces around it and now we just have to select a surface that would be the same way we would select it if we were using or modifying it in SketchUp. So I'll use the B key and the Alt key to pick it. And now as you can see, there's a whole loads of different options that we can use. So if we select this surface and then we do have all the settings here, what you can see right here is a few different stuff. So the texture, well that is basically if we would have a texture to import, we can just import it from this icon. This is the color that if you'd want to overlay it with. So for example, I can just select the purple one and as you can see the metal changed to purple, at least on these ones, but we do not want that right now, uh, maybe even darker. So as you can see here are standard ones, these are kind of presets of colors, but we can also go to advanced and kind of pick it ourselves to any kind of color that we would need in the material editor and then this tint color image fade they're more useful when we actually have a texture applied to it because this is just a metal so we don't need that yeah so over here height map bump map these are to kind of make the more 3d if i choose another material so for example let's just go to the stone one and i get close to the stone as you can see the stone has a little bit of depth so it's not completely flat but if i want to make the depth even higher i can just turn on the displacement map and as you can see this looks even more 3d it does boost the realism quite a bit now the next thing that we have here uh, which i'm going to go back to the metal material is the roughness or the reflections now for this one as you can see this is supposed to be a metal kind of beam surrounding it and it doesn't look very metallic so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go to metallic to the max and i'm just going to leave the roughness at 30 percent and as you can see this does look way more metallic than it did previously and i'm going to do the same thing for the metal kind of fencing or mesh that we have here so metallic once again the metallic slider at 100 percent and then the roughness at 30 percent this is kind of how I feel that metallic surfaces are best optimized in Enscape. So uh, let's go to view 16 by 9. And now what we're going to do is uh, let's just check if everything looks okay with the materials. Now we can also add some more stuff from the asset library. Obviously, what I would suggest you to do with the asset library is to not go super like heavy on utilizing a lot of the assets because I do see a lot of people over filling the scene and not just leaving the building to breathe. Uh, basically just change projection or the perspective to two point lower the field of view to 60 70 degrees and then the rendering quality was up to ultra and that doesn't really make a difference anyway we went to the view management here and then we just set up an angle that we liked and we just saved the view but now i'm changing it just a tiny bit let me just go ahead and go to the visual settings and now we're going to try and improve the lighting that we have now keep in mind that with the lighting that we have here uh the enscape default lighting is all right, but I wouldn't recommend it for the ideal scenario when it comes to exterior renders. So for example, for me, what I like to do is a technique called to use an HDRI. So I do talk about HDRIs very often in this channel, but in case you're just uh, new in Enscape or in my channel overall, Here's a quick trick that is going to improve your renders, probably about, I don't know, 50, 100% better. At least for me, when I found out this, it definitely helped me get better in rendering. So I'm going to go at source and I'm going to go to skybox. Do you have the visual settings selected? Skybox, we can load the skybox from file 
and whenever wherever you downloaded the HDRI, you can just select it, apply it, and as you can see, the whole lighting now changed on our render. Even uh, though the it doesn't look that good right now because the sun is just way too high in terms of the brightness, we're gonna take a look at how we can improve this whole thing. Now over here at the HDRI, we do have the option to use the brightest point as sun direction. So basically, what this will do is this will detect where the brightest point on this image is, which in our instance is this one right here, and it will select that as the sun. So I'm gonna click brightest point to sun direction. As you can see now, the whole image is going to look much more realistic because the lighting will mask the HDRI and the sky. So I'm gonna click rotate and we can rotate it but the sun brightness is way too much so let's go at three percent this is a tiny bit more balanced maybe even this is way too much so now sometimes when you don't want to turn off the sun all the way down and still have just a tiny bit of sun i know the one percent works or like two percent or anything like that but the thing is we would want to uh, use the contrast even from this section which is the brightness section of your eyes so one thing that you will notice is the lower the brightness of the HRI, the sun intensity will be a lot higher and the higher the brightness of the HRI, the sun will be less intense. So you will kind of have to match this in terms of uh, the brightness or the balance between the HRI brightness and the sun. Now I'm going to turn on the sun brightness just a tiny bit. So uh, what I would suggest when you're creating uh, exterior renders is to have kind of three or four HRIs or maybe even less to test out which one looks best with the exterior scene. And in order to do that, we will have to use something new, which I haven't mentioned in this live stream yet, which is the visual preset. So what I'd like to do is I would like to have a few presets here and I will have HRI1. So this would be called HRI1. I will duplicate this and I will call this HRI2. And now, for example, in HRI2, I will go to sky in the sky box and I will load another HRI that I have here in my computer available. If, and then over here I can just click for example midday and as you can see now we will be able to kind of tell a bit the difference between the HRIs so this is a completely different HRI we can turn on the sun brightness even more on this one and now we can just kind of compare them which one looks better which one doesn't look so good so for example we'd have this HRI and then if we just wanted to compare them we can just click between the presets now we can also duplicate this one because I do not like neither of those maybe we can find even a better one so I'm going to choose HRI 3 and on Azure i3, I'm going to load Skybox from file and let's just choose another one. So I'm just going to test out a few different ones. So even this one, uh, this one kind of has like a green tint to it, but I kind of like this lighting. I think this one will look actually best and I didn't even intend to keep this one, but I do like how this one is sitting. It's almost like an early morning kind of uh, lighting setup. And I think I'm going to go ahead with this third one. Now, there's still a few things that we do need to improve onto this image. Now, let's just move on to the setting. For style, we do have a few different modes. So this is the more natural one, which has the colors, the materials and all of that, which is looking quite good as of now. Depth of field is basically like a blur effect onto the render. And if I go here and I turn that on, so for example, let's just go with something like, uh, yeah, 20%. And now we will see that this part of the tree is blurred out and we have it the focus more onto the house and it is more emphasized. And that is because we do have autofocus on. However, if we would have an object that we would want specifically to focus more, you can turn off the autofocus. And then as you can see, we do have a slider created at the focal point. And as we move it, we'll see that there will be a white line moving throughout the render. So as you can see this white line, and basically wherever that white line lands, that's where it's going to be, our render is going to be more focused on. So if I go to the back of the building, you'll see that the closer we are here, uh, the more blurred the building will be. And the further back we are there, or the more uh, clear is going to be shown. I do like this option a lot, especially on this case, because we do not want too much attention to go here on the tree because the tree is more set for composition to kind of have a little bit of framing on the render. We would still want it to be seen, however, not emphasized because the main uh, focus point is going to be here on the house. And that's why I'm going to leave this on, on the way it is. So let's move on to the image section. This is kind of more on the color correction stuff. So we can leave on auto contrast, which works fine. However, if you do want to have more control over the highlights or the shadows, shadows of the whole building we can use these two sliders I'm gonna leave all of those at default and I'm gonna use auto contrast for this one uh, which does look a bit too lit up however now uh, the saturation let's keep it a little bit higher so usually the Enscape default saturation is set way too low and uh, I like to keep the saturation somewhere around 105 uh, maybe even in this image it was alright on where it was but uh, I do like to keep it a little bit higher than the default settings and then the cold temperature, the closer we go on the right, the colder it will be, kind of the colors. And the closer we are to the left, the warmer it will be. So this one, I do think it needs a little bit more balance to go on the right side. So I'm going to leave it at something like this. 
and then all of these effects I just turn all of them off completely because we do not need them I do like to keep the vignette kind of add a little bit more of a uh, dramatic effect onto the render or we want to add a focal point or anything like that the atmosphere settings uh, fog we do not need fog or if you actually wanted to add fog we just turn up the intensity just a tiny bit and also change the height of it to be uh, just a little bit more visible so we can just change it that way the sun brightness we did take a look at the sun brightness that we set it up the way we like it nice sky brightness not applicable for our render but if you were using the default landscape sky we would be able to change the night sky brightness to the slider shadow sharpness i do like to keep the shadows as soft as possible the higher the shadow sharpness the stronger the sun is going to look so uh, i mean the sun intensity or the sun brightness is going to look so if i have it at 100 percent if you're looking towards these shadows you can see that it's very sharp but if i go ahead and lower it it's kind of more blurred it doesn't have very rough edges ambient brightness is more useful for interior render so we don't need that right now one thing that i do want to make changes on since we're here is I want to add a little bit more reflections onto the glass. So I'm going to choose the glass here. I uh, will go to specular to maximum. And as you can see, this will be more reflective and we will not be able to see on the interior as clearly as we did previously. So for the exterior render, I'm just going to leave it at this. And then uh, let me just go ahead and take this as a render. 